There are a great many ways of converting power from fast moving air into usable energy. And generally, pressurized air is a great means of doing this. Now, air directly from a compressor works well, but it's really loud and inefficient, and you've got to carry around a big, bulky, heavy tool. Now, the other way is by storing air in a ridiculous bank of bottles like this. And it works well to power contraptions like generators and vehicles, but they take up a lot of space and run out fast. So, today, I have a new idea. Let's try to use a can of air duster spray. These are actually pretty damn powerful. Actually, let's use two. With two bottles, we can stick some magnets on almost anything that can move, and turn it into a reasonable generator. This weird thing was my first idea, and even though I know it's a terribly inefficient design, I thought it'd look cool to drive a sort of piston generator. When the turbine spins, it moves the piston back and forth, and with the handheld compressor, it does move okay, but with only one air canister, we can already see it outperforming the compressor. Well, first things first, we'll need a better turbine. This four-bladed design might help to capture more air, and indeed, when we give it a wee spray, yeah, we can see the canister needs to be upright. And when it's upright, yeah, this looks promising. In fact, if we take this two kilo weight and suspend it from a spool and some gearing, and then attach our turbine, we can see that using only the power of air, we have enough to lift the weight, albeit slowly. Well, now that we have a turbine, we need a rotor with magnets. If we attach the turbine to the rotor, and we can spin some of these strong magnets really fast, we can create some reasonable current. Oh, cool. Let's try some glue dots. Hopefully these little dots will hold the magnets in place on the rotor. Now, it's not an ideal solution, but we're limited with Lego. Ooh, that is not budging. And fortunately, the dots are strong enough to prevent the magnets from smashing into each other. Now we just need to hope that they'll stay in place while they're spinning super fast. Cause I'm expecting them to spin a lot faster than this. Okay, let's give her a quick try. To mount some coils, we'll use this three-armed thingy. And then to make our coil, we'll use this automatic winder to pull some 32 gauge wire onto a spool. This does take a while with how thin this wire is, but it sure beats hand winding. After a few minutes of winding, we have a lovely tight coil. And with how many windings we have, the resistance will be a little high, but it should allow us to generate an appreciable voltage. Let's see how this one coil performs with this rotor. With our turbine in place, we'll see if direct drive from the turbine can create enough torque to spin this rotor. If we can light this LED, we know we're generating somewhere around three or more volts. Let's give her a whirl with a single air canister. Okay, fingers crossed these magnets don't fly off. Hey, there we go. We have lights. So we know we're generating at least three volts using a single can. However, this turbine is still a little large, I think. I wonder if this small turbine could work too. We've used this turbine in previous projects and it worked okay-ish. So let's give it a try. This mini turbine is probably less efficient, but it does also allow us to get up to three or more volts with a small load attached. And it's much smaller, which will be important later. And it even has enough juice to gently power a hungry LED noodle. So, this rotor is cool and all, but I have a feeling we're going to need bigger magnets if we really want a reasonable output. Oh, and these ring magnets could be exactly what we need. These are much stronger, and the hole makes it easier to mount onto Lego. Ow. <laughs> we still need to be careful around them when they're not bolted down to something. Now the fun part. Building a rotor that we can mount these onto. I want eight of them, so we'll need an octagon shape with holes onto which we can mount the magnets. This rotor is a bit larger, but this also means that the speed of the magnets can potentially get much higher, generating a reasonable voltage. With eight of these magnets now in place, I was worried about balance, but so far it looks okay. And then to host the rotor, we'll build a little stand with some rubber feet to keep it secure on the table. Now we can pop the magnets on top, and hopefully there are no major vibrations when it starts to spin. To start with, let's see if the small turbine can drive it. Mm, unfortunately, no matter how hard I blow on this thing, mm. it just won't budge. So what about a bigger turbine? I'd rather not use it, but we need to know if this can move at all through air power. And unfortunately, it seems that even with the air canister, the rotor is just a bit too heavy. Spin, dammit! 
Okay, I have one final idea here that I think could solve our problem, while also making this way more efficient. If we take this countersunk magnet with a hole in it, and then chuck another countersunk magnet onto the same axle, they repel each other. Whoops. So what if we mount one of these magnets onto the rotor, and then mount the other magnet onto the stand? Let's temporarily fix a magnet to this with some blue tack to see if this works. In theory, when we introduce the rotor back onto the stand, the rotor should levitate in place, dramatically reducing the friction from the heavy rotor. Wow, that is frictionless. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. With even just a gentle tap, this rotor spins for ages. <laughs> you can even bounce it while it's in action. By the way, if you like experiments like these with LEGO and technology, feel free to subscribe or drop a like. Or you can check out my Patreon to see behind the scenes <laughs> of how I make these contraptions. Cheers! Now this time, even without using a dedicated turbine, we can still easily get this rotor up to speed. Okay, this is spinning for damn well forever. It's amazing how effective the magnet cushion is. In fact, once we spin it up to just a gentle spin and start the timer, this rotor goes for a full couple of minutes before settling. Okay, but the important question is if this can actually generate something. So let's fire a little coil and LED again. Now this is a little crude holding the rotor in place with my hand, but it should at least hint at its performance. And unfortunately, it seems that while we're certainly using stronger magnets and we've got some okay hmm. speed, we're still not generating much. Yeah, so these are clearly just not powerful enough. So, when in doubt, let's go for even stronger magnets. These N52 magnets are way more powerful again. And this time, we'll need a much more efficient design to overcome the increase in weight. And, well, I have an idea to maximize our use of space and weight. We'll create a little snake out of these eight incredibly strong magnets, and then we can make its face eat its tail, creating a rotor with no gaps between the magnetic poles. And as luck would have it, this design fits perfectly onto the rotor here. Also, for future designs, it's even possible to contain them using the circular lift arm. Uh oh. Ugh, these things are the worst. There is absolutely no way I can separate them by hand. So, for any South Africans out there, I found another use for your built-on guillotine. Uh oh. Ouch. I hate this. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Ah, yes. Ta-da. To make sure the magnets will grip the rotor, I'm going to use a thin ring of blue tack. Although the magnets won't separate, we still need the rotor mount to grip them. And fortunately, it seems like this whole thing is still relatively balanced. Now we stick on one of our levitation magnets, and when the second is introduced, it'll repel the rotor with just enough force to levitate the rotor platform. Now as for our next generation turbine, I want to create something even smaller with better air capture. And I think this is my best solution yet. With just one air canister, this thing absolutely screams. And now finally, I have confidence going into our build for the next generation compact levitating air powered generator. What a mouthful. Our turbine will sit in the base over here, and our first intake will mount here. Even though I can barely blow through this thin hose, it's still surprisingly enough to spin the turbine. Then we'll need to create a mount and gear reduction for the rotor, and I want to keep it minimal so we can actually see everything going on. This cage then will provide support, and we'll secure the base with some of these lift arms to make sure that we minimize friction as much as possible. The mount then can be introduced to the base, but the turbine is still a little sticky. So we can use a bush to carry the weight of the turbine with reduced friction. This little gear then will give us a 5 to 1 gear reduction, increasing the torque of the rotor, which we'll need if we want to produce a reasonable current. And with the rotor in place... Mm, smooth. It seems that even by just blowing on the hose, we can produce some movement. This bodes very well. And of course, blowing directly onto the turbine works a charm. Next then, we'll need to secure the top of the rotor to keep it stable. Very smooth. And this allows it to run beautifully smooth. I'm delighted with how she purrs. Finally, we'll need a place to mount our copper coils. 
as well as additional support for the cage. And because we're going with a three-phase coil design, we'll need three arms to mount our coils. They'll go here, here, and here. Let's give just one of these coils a try, using our LED again as an indicator, and only one can of air. Hey! <laughs> as she springs into action, the LED lights up almost immediately, which means voltage is not going to be an issue. But let's just hope we can create some useful current as well. To do this, let's add our remaining two coils. We'll feed their outputs through this little hole, and we'll use a three-phase full bridge rectifier to combine all three coils into a single DC output. We'll hook up our air can to the turbine, and we'll test it out on this bank of LEDs. They should have no problem powering these. Alright, fingers crossed. <laughs> Sounds a bit like a race car. And of course, it has no problem powering these. In fact, I think I blew a few of them in the process. So the output is probably reasonable. Now these LED noodles require quite a lot of current, so let's see how these fare. Okay. Hmm, well, it looks like the voltage generated likes them immediately, meaning the voltage is probably quite high. Though they're not at full brightness, so maybe current isn't crazy. So, uh, what voltage are we actually getting? Whoa! Ah, well, with minimal load, this spins up to a ridiculous speed. That capacitor is not rated for that. So, uh, at least 20 volts, I guess? Probably much more, as I didn't even get up to full speed. So I guess these 12 volt bulbs should be easy? Mm, yep, our race car has no problem with these. Wow. Okay, honestly, I'm a little bit scared to use two air intakes after seeing that performance, so I'm probably only going to try this with heavy electrical loads. God, I hope this doesn't destroy itself. Now charging a capacitor like this massive one farad cap will represent a very significant electrical load. And then we can use it to power other contraptions. Hmm, well, we can see this generator brings the large cap up to charge fairly quickly. And then we can use this to power things like this little radio module. Connect it to our homemade LEGO speaker. And chuck our cap in there. And let's see if we can power the radio. <laughs> well, there we go. An air-powered LEGO radio. And we can even store energy in the capacitor and use it like a little battery for things like this LEGO motor. And can it charge our phone? Don't try this at home, by the way. This could easily fry something. And yup, it's probably not outputting much current, but it's technically possible. Finally, this is a 24 volt LED noodle. It makes me pretty nervous with the speed this will need to get up to just to power this thing. Okay, fingers crossed. Whoa! Whoa! Good lord! It's a miracle this thing didn't explode into a thousand pieces. That is crazy! Well done, little dude. But I'm not doing that again.